All right, well, we're back. Uh, this is part two of the interview. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we're going to talk about family now and the forming of Litz, uh, how you get to Litz, and how many different iterations of the band there were before Litz. So, like we mentioned before, you have two brothers in the band. Mm -hmm. They're twins. They yeah. were in a punk band, or they were really more punk before Yeah, Litz. punk and ska. Punk and ska. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... When when did you start becoming a part of the dynamic? When's the youngest you can remember? Like me too, guys. Like I want to be part of this. Um, I mean, I feel like I um, started my own bands. Like when when I when I was, I mean, I started my first band in sixth grade called the Tomatoes, <laughs> um, and Nick Thrasher was actually the drummer of that band. Um, what kind of band were you? Oh, uh, ska. Scott, man, uh, just goofy, you know, sixth graders music. Sure. You know, we all played the horns and stuff. Um, so I, I guess always like they've always had bands, and I've always had bands mm -hmm. when we were growing up. We had never worked together. Mm. Uh, then we bonded over partying and things like that, and real and you know, just like jam. How many years of party, you guys? Uh, four years. That's enough of a gap. Yeah. To have that that barrier. Yeah, yeah. There was a barrier. We never. Re we bought honestly. Like we we bought like they got me stoned one time, and we've been best friends ever since. Uh. We did. We we were like. <laughs> You know, we were normal brothers, but like, didn't we didn't really? I don't know. We just knew each other in that passing. Can bring siblings together. Yeah, 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 sure. And like, um, so you can thank marijuana for. Hell yeah, our thanks, weed. Yeah, I'll and say it right now. Give us the weed. Yeah, give us the weed. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then somewhere in college, just. Didn't start I was in my own. Them. I started playing guitar way late on the spectrum. I was thirteen when I got my oh, first don't guitar. Don't tell me that. So I was, I was late. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, so I had my own band. Like it's two years after that. I was in like a pro, I was in a prog rock. You're talking and, about fifteen now. Yeah, I was fifteen years old, so I was in the prog rock. Already in theater. prog rock. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> I started. I was Eddie Van Halen nuts. That's so what I learned. Did you? I was about to ask. I want to dig into this prog rock. What are we talking about? Van Halen, Gentle Giant. Van Halen's yes. not like prog rock. I was no, uh, not Genesis. Not, yes, we're talking Floyd. about like prog metal. Ah. Like, definitely more uh, dream theater, liquid tension experiment. There, there we I was go. All about that. Uh, even Primus. We like Primus a lot. Mm -hmm. Our bass player could do all that Primus stuff. We did a show with them actually. Our band. Siafu, yeah. Siafu, we had a group. That was our very first and Nick, show. Nick was also in that band, Siafu. So I've, I've actually been in a shitload of bands with Nick. Um, but you guys covered, uh, what, what's the one uh, with the annoying, Freebird. No, I didn't. You, I swear you guys Definitely covered Definitely not us. No, you? <laughs> that oh, wasn't man. us. We covered a Primus song pretty okay. good. I swear but, you yeah. guys played Freebird. <laughs> Promise you that wasn't us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Promise you. Um, but yeah... No, no, that was not us for sure. But so, <laughs> did how did you? I don't, I don't remember how me and Justin started working we, together. Though. We both knew we played. I think Ian McIntyre might have been your last guitar player at Siafu. And that band broke up, and I think Ian mentioned to you to hit me up for something like yeah. that for music. You just hit me up out of the blue one day and was like, hey, come over to my brother's house and jam. And that's when I walked over, and Logan, your brother, was there. It was you, maybe Carl and Nana. Yeah, and uh, that's when adult situation was. Formed. Yeah, adult that situation. Was right after the progress. Previously, thing, so Vel the Velvet Elvis and the Heart Rapers. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Elvis, that, that Elvis the, and the, the Heart Rapers. That was the punk rock. So, so Litz actually is some sort of incarnation of a tomato, uh, <laughs> African killer ant. What, uh, I don't know what... what the fuck was our band? It was Enigma, that's right. Enigma. Enigma. What about Full Retard? Oh, Full yeah. Retard. Full Retard's in there. Too. Uh, yeah. Velvet Elvis and the Heart Rapers. Or five or six bands already here. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's not even counting the side projects. Like, um, well, they're in real quickly, never to go Full Retard. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so we did that a band, Adult Situation. We did a couple cool things in college. I, I was going to school at the time and didn't live in the area, so we weren't really trying or fully active. It was just definitely fun. And then um, after that experience that I told you at Camp Barefoot, I came back and was like, let's get this shit together. Let's do this. Came back a change man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sort of. That's when we got serious, and that's when we decided on Litz rather than a complete joke for a band name. And yeah. we were at such a, uh, we were going over so many crappy band names, even mm. band names now. That's crappy. That's the hardest part. Out. It was horrible. Yeah, so we were just like, like, yeah, Litz, we're definitely. It we're, was just so easy that way. Three brothers in the band. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, fam the family name, we just figured, you know, because we had the music store, but we were gigging for a few months without a name. 
you know, just trying things out. Um, yeah. 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 You guys didn't actually like the idea of using your last name. I was kind of pushing that, I remember. Yeah, you know, it seems ego. A lot of people that meet me for the first time, and they're like, and I'm like, hey, I'm Austin. Uh, or if I say my last name and then be like, yeah, I'm in a band and we're called Lits, they're just like, you fucking egotistical <laughs> bastard. I'm like, ah, well, it's it's a family. It's a family. Yeah. It's a cool uh, last name, too. Yeah, like it almost lit. sounds like an acronym Lits. or something. Yeah. You're almost like thinking about it. Yeah, well, it's a, I don't know. It's really easy. Yeah, it just so time. happens to be very catchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, People so, know them, like we said, from the music store in Gaithersburg, where we all teach there now and everything. So everyone knows yeah. the music store. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, I mean, the music store has been a staple of the community for over 50 years. So Let's talk They're, about that. The, the full name of the company is? So Victor Litz Music Center. Uh, it's been in Gaithersburg, Maryland for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, yeah, I mean, so every, uh, uh, tons of people have been there, uh, or, yeah, I don't know. Dime by Daryl, there's a guitar clinic there. So it's it's like a music supply yeah. company, but there's also, uh, uh, not just lessons, but almost an academy? There's a, a lessons and an academy of rock there. I used to teach that, actually. There's, it's like, um, teenagers, you know, like, like the, yeah, the, like the, the movie School of Rock, mm -hmm, kind of, mm -hmm. almost like that, um. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so it, it's really actually a community, like, the store itself, it's, it is a community in there. There is, uh, the, the back part is the lessons department, which my aunt runs. The front part is the retail, mm. which my father runs, and then my mom does the bookkeeping upstairs, and my, my brothers, you know, work in the retail. I teach there, uh, Justin teaches, um, and... So, the, I mean, there's people that just hang out there all day. Like, I see the same, there, there, there's a couple people, people that just, it, it's, it's just like the coffee shop that they just chill at and, and mess around with gear. Um, a lot of cool stuff gets uh, traded there, too. It's almost like a cool version of Atomic. Right now, there's like a really cool PRS Santana in there right now. It's like 4000 something dollars. I need to make my way up there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool yeah. store. Some, it's... It's almost hit or miss with the guitars, but there's sometimes there's some really cool stuff. It doesn't always sit on the shelf too long, but uh, mm -hmm. there's some cool stuff in there. It's a cooler version of Atomic, because I like Atomic, yeah. so I definitely didn't It's like a much it. bigger yeah. version, and the shit all works at this place. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Play so many broken <laughs> guitars, yeah, yeah, none, none of that nah. shit is broken. Or well, yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you. Not that Atomic's a bad store. I've gotten some real cool stuff there, too, but I've definitely played some crappy instruments <laughs> there as well. And so... What's your earliest memory of being at there? I'm assuming this is something that you grew up with your whole life. It's almost just like you were there all the time uh, as a kid. Like, and then eventually you guys all become a part of it. So, like, how how far back are we talking? Like, just like you were just from a child. Well, I always wanted to do music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I real I, not until that pivotal moment at Camp Airfoot or whatever. Um, did I really have, like, an affirmation of, like, this is what you're doing? A sense of purpose. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I always had that sense of purpose with, with music in general, but not specific, like, mm -hmm. tangibly... I am this. Like, I, like this. Because I experimented with... I, I have a minor in business, or I, I, or I, I did four years, three and a half years of, like, a minor in business. I thought, like, I wanted to do, be, like, a manager or something like that. And That's like, interesting. That shit sucks. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, I talked to this guy from the National Cathedral. Uh, he manages their choir, and it costs more money. They, they, uh, all he does is fundraising because it costs more money to put on a concert than it actually brings in for the community. And I was like, well, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> like so, like, I mean, I appreciate that you're, like, Supporting this like high level of extinct art, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, uh, but uh, like, uh, but his job was fundraising, and I was like, well, I don't want to be just a fundraiser. Like, mm. I, I want to actually create the music, um, and so so. Uh, but yeah, it, it was all that instance of Camp Barefoot, where it was just like, this is what you're doing, buddy. Like, like, boom, and, and like. Uh, I don't know. Things like that are awesome because then your path just kind of just unfolds on itself. And Becomes clearer. It's, yeah, if you can have a clear picture in your head, um, knowing what you want is the biggest step, you know, in anything. Um, but and then there's also happy accidents. Like I had no idea who Will was uh, until he just like jammed at an open mic with us, and it was like, whoa, that shit was wild. Yeah, let's talk about that more, because there's an established history, all these years of stuff between you, you know, the, the company, the community, your dynamic between you and your brothers, and it really does feel like, uh, you guys, how, how far along was the band before you guys crossed paths with Will? About a year. 
I year. think. I think a year. About yeah. a year. So, like, well, what were your first impressions? <clears throat> Meeting a band that's already in, in, in their groove and you already do your thing. I don't even, it wasn't even the band that, that I met at the open mic. It was just Austin playing sax with whoever. And uh, I think it might have been Dan Gellerman convinced me to get my chaos pads and come up and do effects with them. Uh, and just an organic fit. Yeah. Just, yeah, honestly, I remember me and Will had lunch. I, I remember, like, or he hit me up, you hit me up to record. Uh, he was working on his yeah. Total Freedom record, because um, Will is also Playground, for those who don't know, which is uh, an electronic, he's also an electronic DJ and all that, producer, all that stuff. Um, and he, yeah, you asked me to record on something, I came over, and I remember we had lunch or something, and it just like clicked on ideas, it was, we, we had the same type of, like, it, it, it was, I don't know, meeting Will was like a really cool experience, because it was the same... We're, like we're both doing the same shit, but completely different shit. Yeah. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like when I met Austin, I knew like, okay, here's a person that like has a vision and is not gonna ever flake. Yeah. And it was something that I could safely invest my time into. It's hard to find those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, Austin plays collaborates with you on your project mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And yeah. so does Justin sometimes yeah, too. Justin and, and, Nick. and Nick. Yeah. yeah. And Mateo Monk sometimes. Nice, and, I know Mateo. Yeah. I, I mean, really, yeah. Playground, you, you said all the time it's like water. You, you've had 10 incarnations yeah, of it. Yeah. It's just, you know, I make music and find people to play with me and uh, different people over the years have brought a lot of different things to that. Mm hmm. Hey, so, um,. Going back to uh, the dynamics of the band, having uh, three three brothers in the band, uh, you find, I, I know you guys have been playing together for a couple years, and after a certain amount of time, you get really comfortable with someone, you know where they're going to go next. You find it easier, easier with your brothers, you have that musical ESP going on. Yeah, I mean, Michael and Logan have ESP on another level. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, they're they, tight. I mean, they're twins. They have this, the bass player and the drummer have the same mirrored DNA. Same DNA, <laughs> just mirrored. And, like, literally, like, when they were younger, one would lose a tooth on one side and the other would lose it on the other side. Like, in the same day, you know? Like, they're, uh -huh. so yeah, to have the, like, they, the same like, haircut. You can't tell them apart yeah. if you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I've trained myself to, uh, Tell them they have different I styles. Think Logan slightly has, different uh, style. His hair is a little. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, like style. it's like the couple Sklar brothers. When I first met him, though. See, I if you're watching, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell him apart when I first met him. It took me a long time. It was weird. I remember yeah. I was in the base with them. I was watching a band with these guys. I'm just like, you. I didn't use their names for like Hey, hello. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, like, in their voices, I could first tell. And then that's when, you know, oh my God, that was tough, though. Because back then they had the same damn haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, the, sideburns, same damn sideburns. Oh, I, mean, I had God. some sideburns back then, too. I had some big mutton chops. That shit was awesome. <laughs> I've been, they've been trying to convince me to grow up. You bring it back with combo mustache. Uh, I can't do the combo <laughs> mustache. No, no, I can't do that. I, I will grow up the chops again. But that, that ESP, though, mm -hmm. um, is, it's so real mm -hmm. with them that we literally we have problems with eye contact and they're not allowed to wear sunglasses on stage anymore because <laughs> they are so just tuned into their own world. Like, Logan is just head in the clouds, like not looking at anything, just because he doesn't have, he's so tuned in. Uh, same thing with Mike, he's so in the pocket. They're, uh, like, whether they realize it or not, they're trancing the fuck out. Yeah, it's like and when a video game player like doesn't even look at the screen, they're just like in it, crushing yeah, people, yeah. zoned yeah. in. They're in the yeah. flow, like, like <laughs> real heavy. Um, so we, it's so so much to a point where we have problems with <laughs> eye contact, where it's like, because it, because we're a jam band, you know, like or the record honestly is maybe not the most jam bandy sounding record, mm -hmm. but live mm -hmm. we are a jam band. Yeah, and so there are improvs. You know, sometimes it's, it's all improv. Go to this section. Go to you know. So there, eye contact is necessary. We, we're going to get a talk back, Mike, soon. Yes. Uh, I don't know why we haven't done that, so we can communicate on stage and make fun of people in the crowd and things like that. 
Um, <laughs> First of all, you guys aren't jam band. You're a band that jams. We're a band. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, we're a band that jams. And, 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 right. and, yeah. and from being in the same situation, I, I know the, I know what you're talking about with eye contact. You can have the greatest killer jam, and if you all just not end it at the right time, it ruins. It, yeah. it means nothing. Throw it out the window. Like, it's garbage. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's part of the risk reward. You have to take those risks. Yeah, you, you have you, to make the songs different. Chances. Take it higher when you don't need to sometimes or whatever. You know, <laughs> if they're not looking, then keep on going you know, until they get their attention at least. If we make it worth it, we haven't had. Uh, I don't think we've really majorly fucked up anything in a pretty long time, which has been pretty. Yeah, no, no major fuck ups in a while. Well, I mean, it took us a while to get. Into, like, really, um, Pro just, tip: Don't fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, actually, that's been the number one rule. It doesn't have to be good. It just can't suck. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll like we'll use it. Like, just you can't suck. Like right. nothing can be like okay, that sucks. Right. right? Because um, everything's subjective, and at that point, it doesn't really matter. Well, I don't like it when things are too robotic anyway. It takes out a lot of feeling. Yeah, you need to have humanism in it. Yeah, yeah, especially on even records from the 90s before, like, autotune and stuff. Those things aren't yeah. perfect, and that's what yeah. makes them great. The imperfections, it's, yes, it makes them amazing. It's, it's no awesome. good. Some but of the best guitar solos, you can hear some fuck-ups in there. Jimmy Page was not that clean of a guitar player, let's mm -hmm. be real. But, but that was play. so awesome. Yeah. 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 That's so behind it. Once exactly. you start manipulating things on that level, you're fucking with the intent that it was created with, like, what they wanted. You know, you're fucking with that when you start getting in there and manipulating it like that. Yeah. Uh, too, you know, on, you know, too much of it, you know. Right. Um, but... Uh. So I want to go back to this the the band ESP and the and, and not just between the two brothers. What's what's the time that you guys can all individually recall where as a band it was like you, you finished playing and just like fuck yes that was it. To be it, honest, we're a band. Mine. Mine probably came in the playground when we did the Love is Real set, the 8x10. That was just me, Nick, Austin, and Will. But that was like, even the lit set, we played a set before that too. But that whole night I remember might have been like the, the peak, I think, pivotal moment of uh, how good this band was really becoming. I thought that felt so good, in my opinion. That was, what, a year and a half, two years ago, maybe? It's a year ago. A year ago? March last year. March, March last year? Okay, so a year ago. Yeah, that was like... That was, th really that was definitely peak. our like, affirmation of like, we are a band. I, rem I think I even remember after that being like, yeah, I think we're like a real band. Fuck, now. that's what I, exactly what I'm yeah. looking for. Yeah. 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 Fuck, that, that's, there's almost no other way to put that. It's like, fuck yeah. 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 As long as that's there, <laughs> the band is good. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Motet moment. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It was like another one of, yeah, there was definitely another one of those moments after that show. I feel like our last 930 Club on Halloween show. Yeah, what was it like to play there? That's one of my dream venues. That was yeah. on Halloween. A lot of people. I mean, I here. I lived there in the '90s. I saw every band every weekend at the 9:30 Club, my whole high school years. So it was awesome, and I think that excitement all led into what our performance that night. And I just remember feeling like we had really pulled it off the high energy, and it was yeah. a real show. Yeah, and not just yeah. like a band playing music, but a real show. Yeah, show too. There was yeah. a lot of, was a lot of cool theatrics yeah. in there and everything. It was we were fun. just going bonkers, kind of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was another one of those moments. I mean, there, those moments just happen constantly. It, it's just like another step of the fractal. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. it, it, it's we're just we're just on this journey. You know, even uh, I forget who it was the other day. Maybe it was David Bowie or something. It was just like. You know, uh, you're never too old to reinvent yourself. Yeah. You're never too old to find a new... Or no, was, I think Jimmy Herring posted... So, I don't know, it was just one of those, like, silly memes, but it was like... Black was Star like, is a great example of that, though. Bowie fan, huge Bowie fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you yeah, can sure. all... It, it's, it's not about... You know, not to be cliche, but it's not about the destination. It's the journey. And, like, those steps of the fractal are... Super exciting and then really anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's like it was like you know, then it's like okay we did that right because who do you share right. it with other than the group? Yeah. It's like you can't explain it to someone else. Like oh my god, that, like we yeah. finally felt you. Like you finally felt what? Yeah. And it's right, like right. you finally, really you know, have to be there. It's it's all about the, like that like the moment before we went on stage at the nine thirty club. Like wow. that is like that's just like or well, I mean it's in the moment while playing as well. Um, it's fun. I, it's funny how anticlimactic a lot of success or whatever, quote-unquote, feels like uh, 
because you know you get to this next level and it's like okay we did that you know <laughs> and then, I, then it's over yeah and then it's yeah. over but but then like but like the it's, joy it's, it's going leading up to it yeah, right, it's a right, glass right. mountain that we're climbing right. the joy in that basement like knowing like we're gonna play the fucking 9 right. club let's practice yeah. hard like yeah that's that's the greasy when, smoky basement to play in a yeah. huge club you know mm -hmm. like the club you're yeah, it's, yeah. that's words don't describe that and it's like you said earlier in the interview it's like with your band I'm, I'm definitely seeing a common thread of like you don't even think about it till after it's done and then you reflect back on it as opposed to like seeing a clear path like it's like you do it and then it's like oh yeah that was that was it man so it's like that's I think exactly what we were looking for in this interview and how do how do we wrap the family uh, portion of the show other than maybe want to talk about I don't, yeah, I don't know. Let's let's go back. Let's just let's have some fun. We have we have a couple more minutes. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Uh, I know I know all you guys were uh, were big gearheads growing up in the store, and I know I can talk to your your brothers mm. about gear all day. And and Jay, I'm all you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a favorite piece of gear growing up, or uh, that came through the you, store? You well, well see, store? I actually am sort of weird in that equation. I always knew people at the music store that sucked and were really into <laughs> gear. <laughs> there's a lot of those. I, there's a lot of so those. I, I there's a convention up. for it, yeah, actually. Yeah. What's I, going on next week? <laughs> yeah. Anaheim. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, shit, that, that's how my family eats, though, is like, right. uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, because music, you don't... The, uh, music's almost like football for kids. You know, uh -huh. they don't expect to be famous. Or, well, I mean, or like, like soccer, some football players almost. do. Soccer, you know, it's a constructive activity to make your life better. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, should be a part of the community. Not everyone should shoot for this because it's going to kill you. Um, but, <laughs> hey, man, um, you know, uh, but uh, where was I going? With? What, what were we just talking about? The you guys here, the music store. Gear. Gear. Yeah. All right, so yeah. I don't know shit. I'd learn. I really? when I met Will, I think Will was like the first. I feel so much better now. I don't know anything about that. Shit. Uh, so I'm I'm a, I'm newly obsessed with it because it, it like broke that state of mind where or like well, I got to a certain point with my playing where it was like okay I need like real shit like I'm doing real shows now, um, but I grew up kind of jaded and was like I'm gonna learn how to play the music like I don't give a <laughs> no, shit I mean, I what I'm playing that. on. Um, it's very definitive. Yeah. So. Um, so I, I, I often have trouble even remembering what brand my saxophone is. Um, but, uh, uh, um. I like, I started out kind of the same way after a couple of years and I got kind of obsessive with gear. But I mean, I played Epiphones for the longest time. They looked like Gibsons and they felt good. Whatever, I loved it. And then once I finally started getting into gear though, it just kind of... Whew. Or once, There's once no you back. also once you develop as a player and a musician, you start to realize what works and what doesn't work for you. Some people aren't as particular, but right. I know me and you have have had We've many developed our, uh, <laughs> our tastes. <laughs> I learned to play acoustic guitar on a terrible guitar. It was like a ninety dollar guitar, and I I taught myself hard and got good. And then I went and got a Martin one day. It was just the different forcing yourself to learn on on bad equipment. That makes you no, I'm, yeah. I'm with you in high school. I practiced with an Ibanez with the, the strings that far. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. Squire was the same way. I, I still have my Squire, too, man. <laughs> I think I carved a Slayer logo into it. At one time. Oh. I was a weird kid. I don't know. <laughs> I carved my name into mine. That's okay. It's egotistical. <laughs> no, there you go. Whatever. But not the... The gear, like you kind of, it's almost like you got to fight it. You know, Jack White says that kind of. It's like it's or, or Miles Davis. You know, it's like boxing kind of. Um, but nowadays, I think we're all pretty like gear is just fun. Yeah, now, I, I've got this new. Well, I got that Nord keyboard, and that was my first experience of having like okay, something good, or, or whatever. Where it was like, okay, this is like a professional grade thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that like opened my mind up, and I just got this new Moog. Um, and that changed, literally it changed my life. Like, it changed aspects of my life. The way the routing is set up, it's like almost like a neural network where like each knob is connected to each other knob in the whole system. So I can set the aftertouch to a, anything and make really bonkers ass sounds um, and, you know, cool, cool things like that. But it, it showed me like possibilities in my real life and showed me how to think of things like it was like the most tangible like spider web of reality 
uh, that we exist in, like, built into a freaking instrument. Oh, this got uh, very heavy. We're talking about keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Moogs are... Shit just got mystical. <laughs> yeah, right. Moogs, I mean, that's... The, the, we just went to the Moog, the Moog factory. Like, that yeah. place yeah. will blow your mind. It's it's it is mystical, and, and Seriously, no, I'm a guitar no joke player, about like, it. Yeah, in yeah, a yeah, completely different. tangible, like, physical, I can show you why it's spiritual. Like, the Moog is fucking magic. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And, so uh, we but, touched but, on uh, Will's uh, history. He just mentioned he learned how to play acoustic, and Justin, you know, learned how to play uh, when he was thirteen. How did you sort of start? Uh, well, what was your first instrument? I, I was first trained on violin, classically trained with violin when I was starting at four. Um, but there's always been instruments around the house, right? So forever, I've been playing, um, and then. Uh, I don't actually play violin anymore. I don't know why. I really, really want. That's like the one thing that my life's. You know, there, there's. I already. It's. There's doing so much. You know, already. But that. I really am gonna. I'm gonna relearn that soon. You already play um, eight instruments in the band. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So. Um, so yeah, I learned on violin. Then um, when I got the saxophone, that's when I quit violin, hmm. and I, I was in third grade, I think, and that was like, holy shit. Like this thing is cool. Like I don't, I don't know why it was just it was so much different than the violin. Yeah, the woodwind is a big open. Yeah, you know, it's close to the intro. human voice. Yeah. I think I think subconsciously that's what I was resonating with, but I didn't know it at the time. Um, and so um, that shit was yeah. So I did um, saxophone for a long time. Always toyed around with instruments mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and then had a bad professor in college, and he almost made me want to quit playing Those saxophone. Those were the worst. <laughs> crazy it, band it, professor. Yeah, <laughs> he was a crazy guy. Like, it was like all like was this weird side of his brain, like where it was just like stri- it, it, There was no fun in what he was doing, and it was like music is serious fun. It's like a seriously human good way to put in, it. experience. It's you know, it, it, but um, so I almost quit, and then I uh, I, I did classical guitar in college, so. Uh, and French horn and bassoon are thrown in there places and trumpet and, uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, it all stemmed from a violin. Excellent. Well, I think we're about to wrap, but let's do a lightning round real quick. Holy grail. Money's not an object. What's a piece of gear that you, like, if you could have it today, money's like, right now, right now, you got him in the back. You got it. We can, we can go walk around and produce it. Just say it. One item. One item. Each of you. What do you say? What's the, we'll start with Will. Uh, I would go with the the Moog Modular. Oh, like good the, choice. The system, big for, system three for, for the non geeks the out the there. That's one they what, make. What, what's it's that? Thirty one? grand. <laughs> At least. <laughs> like system thirty seven or thirty fifty. System thirty five one hundred. I don't know. Whatever the biggest one. That's you can like add on. It gets like almost. Yeah. Infinite. Well, yeah. That's modulars the you can. Yeah. 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 So it never ends. So your answer never ends. My answer never ends. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a foundation to build it's upon. A foundation. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, yeah. 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 Um, that's like getting all you can eat buffet for your last meal. Damn <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 uh, me. Um. I'm looking for right now actually like a uh, a two humbucker strat. It's got a trem that stays in tune perfectly. That's not a Floyd Rose. I don't think that exists. So if anyone can produce that piece of gear for me, I'm all ears, please. Paul. <laughs> Paul, yes. I, I would definitely talk to Paul. I love, actually, I have a Paul Reed Smith. I love it. I want a slimmer neck on it, and if it could stay in tune better, that would be great. But I do love my Paul Reed Smith. I could use another one of those, Paul. <laughs> listening, Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Your finishes are beautiful, by the way. <laughs> and for the sure. dismount, uh, John Coltrane's saxophone. Ah, the prestige item. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. Because Will already took the modular. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go big, go big. Yeah. Or just get something expensive and sell it and get whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'd be a 59 less Paul. 59 less Paul, half a million dollars. <laughs> I'll take that. Well, I think that's it. I think there's nothing left to do but play. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we got that. Let's do this. I think I, I, I should say thank you. And if you're still listening to this podcast, this is our first one. And I hope you guys uh, stick uh, around for many more to come. This has been our interview with Litz. Stick around for the performance. Cheers. Cheers! <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think that went well. Yeah. Yeah, it feels awesome. All right.